Shutter Stories, a Canon podcast. Hi, I'm Ilvin Jokicin. I'm a Canon ambassador and you are listening to a special bonus episode of Shutter Stories, a Canon podcast where we talk to inspiring photographers, content creators and filmmakers. Skateboarding, tricks, dinosaurs and bullet time image capture are just a few of the things we'll be talking about on today's episode. So today I'm joined by three crucial team members from Cut Media, the production company tasked with capturing Canon's latest exciting trick-driven collaboration with Red Bull. We have director Caitlin Black and Kiefer Passi and Nick Richards from the camera team. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thanks, Thank for, having hey, us. thanks Hi. for having us. Thanks for being here. So, Caitlin, can you maybe explain what your role is in this beautiful project? Hi, I'm a senior creative and a director. And yeah, I've been involved with the project for the last six months, uh, from ideation all the way through to pre-prod and directing on the day. And uh, also into edit directing when we came off the shoot. So you've been very busy. Very busy. <laughs> So, Kiefer, what is your role in this project? Uh, so, I've basically been the DOP for this project, um, mainly with sort of lighting in mind. Uh, I'm sort of, I think I was brought on really to bring a bit of cinematic value uh, to sort of bridge the gap between like core skateboard fans and, you know, a wider audience. And as a skater myself, I guess uh, Dan McGee, who got me involved with this project initially, thought I'd yeah, be a good option to do that, having Perfect the eye niche. and the knowledge. Yeah. Of skateboarding. Yeah. Great. And Nick, what about you? Uh, so I was kind of brought onto the project because I have a history in skateboard filmmaking. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, there was a lot of motion involved with the project in the briefs. So, you know, I've got a, a long history in like gimbal operation as well as like being able to use a fisheye and, you know, push along on a skateboard at the same time. So, yeah, the the whole thing, just trying to make it feel as dynamic as possible, basically. Sounds very difficult to film and skate at the same time. Take some practice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think I will try it anytime soon, but uh, I'm uh, curious how you did all of this. So, yeah. Thanks. So, Caitlin, let's start with you. Um, could you tell me about the project? What is it all about and how did it come about? Yeah, so um, Red Bull came to us with this incredible brief Um to be honest, it's not a brief that I've ever experienced <laughs> receiving before. So first reactions were total excitement. Uh, I felt like I was a kid getting to experience for the first time again, going into the Natural History Museum and exploring uh, like the most insane location. Uh, so yeah, it is one of those kind of moments where you're like, I'm never going to be able to do this again. Um, mm. So it was a lot of excitement. So Caitlin, when you received the yeah. brief, um, what did you visually have in mind? Yeah, Your so dream. we talked about just making, you know, a broad audience feel like they're really part of the journey of like what the girls were going to go through from when they entered until they left. So um, we really wanted it to be quite interactive and immersive. And so everything we talked about was or dreamed up really was about kind of lots of movement um, and just keeping the energy high because they're obviously, you know, the challenges are that we're at nighttime. And so um, so I talked a lot about uh, like the approach being, you know, crash zooms, uh, whip pans, lots of kind of... What is a crash zoom? Crash zoom is like a... Well, I mean, it, and it just it's stops literally trying. like you start... On, say you started on my face and then you crash zoomed out ah. to the other side of the room. And so I can talk in a little bit more of detail on some of the kit that we used that like that came to life and it was super helpful. But it's just really fun and playful and um, is it just keeps everything kind of like upbeat uh, and visually interesting uh, and keeps everyone's attention span. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was really fun. And then, um, yeah, a big part of it was user generated side. So we really wanted it to be very playful. Like the best part about this project is it's a chance for the skaters to come and play. And so like we really wanted to kind of embed that into the approach of of the visual style um so yeah so there was a lot of equipment in the list that allowed us to do that which yeah, is cool to really use it to the best of your yeah 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 to you to make yeah. the perfect yeah because uh, you know it was the whole project was supposed to be kind of this really nice um mixture of handheld documentary style uh, mixed with some like more polished kind of commercial looking shots mm -hmm. and that's really cool because a lot of time you're doing one or the other so yeah, we were exactly. like great this is a good challenge to be able to like mix those two kind of styles together yeah which is fun 
and to kind of experiment with that as well, I yeah. can imagine. When you get a brief like that, what start, yeah, what happens in your mind? Do you start thinking of what you can do and like it's yeah. pretty, I mean it's a crazy brief. It's such a crazy It place. is. And a big part of it is just working uh with Red Bull and just discovering what it is that's special about the project. Um and there were so many things that were really special about this one, but we really wanted to capture the energy of a session. Um, and we're used to seeing them outside a lot and there's so much experimentation going on there, but it's, you know, it's never been done before going inside the museum um, and it will never happen again. So we were just trying to explore like ways to really bring uh, the skaters into the fold of making the film themselves and just kind of cherish like this limited time that we're going to have there. Um, and yeah, get them to get hands on as well, which we can talk a little bit about. <laughs> and the limited time was how long? so we had four nights oh my goodness yeah, yeah we're gonna talk about that but that's <laughs> crazy that's so short okay yeah. Kiefer and Nick um which area of the museum did you have access to could you film anywhere so we had mainly access in the main hall but we also got to get in the mineral room as well which was really cool um and then <laughs> yeah yeah definitely and we had access to uh, the balconies that are on the upper level in the main hall as well so yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on, rails and stuff like that. And did you, like, how many times did you go there to kind of scout the location and to see? Did twice, right? Yeah, I think we did two recce. One uh, when we met all the guys from Canon for the first time. And, uh, yeah, then the second one was more of a technical recce with the gaffer, et cetera. Okay, I see. So what was it like to shoot there at night? <laughs> oh, it was crazy. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I think, like, for me, I was like, it changes so much when it gets to night time. You know, like, there's all, you know, all the lights are on and stuff. And, you know, uh, me and Nick were sending each other, like, references of films that have been shot in there, like Paddington Bear. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yes. So, yeah, it was really cool, like, just being in that space, thinking, like, oh, what can we do with it now? You know, like, yeah. something that we specially, like, specialise in, I guess. When you when you step foot in there as well, it's completely empty, and you could hear a pin drop, but the echo as well is amazing. And oh. It's just nuts. Like, I don't know. Unless you work there, you're never going to get to experience that. Yeah. It's just Absolutely. so cool. Sounds a bit scary, too, in some ways. Like, wasn't it creepy a little bit? It's echoey. That was yeah. the thing I noticed. Yeah. You just... You can't hear anyone else but yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it sounds amazing. I wish I could have been there. It sounds like the best place to uh, <laughs> to shoot something like this. It's amazing that you got this access. Mm. Um, so I know as a photographer that shooting on location can be extremely stressful. But a location like this would be beyond stressful. Can you, any of you, talk a bit about that? I guess the one of the fun challenges let's say <laughs> of the project is the fact that the reason why we were sh shooting at night was because it's still open to the public during the day yeah and so we had to be in and out every single night you know like w and we had to be out by very strict times so we couldn't run over so that definitely brought its own challenges just to make sure that we were also working with the athletes because you know there's only so long they're going to be able to skate at the level they're skating so yeah. there was a lot of just like kind of going back and forth trying to figure out what was right for them what, how much time they needed and then how we were going to be able to like film within that the parameters of that yeah um, so it was quite fun <laughs> it <laughs> was quite in it's like incognito as well being like that time of night <laughs> just like we're in and out before the public there's, come there's, in there's definitely so parallels come from like the skate world because you know no one wants you skating on their property yeah. And, you know, we had exactly. permission to be there, but at the same time with the time constraints, we also felt that pressure, which is <laughs> yeah. really... Yeah. How many hours would you have each night? Uh, we were. It was roughly eight to eight, but yeah, yeah. we were, yeah, it depended on who was coming from where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we had obviously all the ramp builders setting up before us, so... Yeah. So yeah, yeah it was eight quite stressful eight. moving lights and stuff about as well. Like, I had mainly hands-on lights when I was on the project and just, yeah, moving it across because even like the floors listed in the building... So just like moving about, you know, like heavy grip and stuff like that. I, yeah, I was quite nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like got into it eventually. But yeah, at the start, it was like, it was you quite a lot. You were walking around like... Yeah, because it's totally unfixable as well. It's yeah. not like a, like a location <laughs> house where you can put a lick of paint over it or something. That yeah, it's like, I'm done. No one saw this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't work like that there. <laughs> nope. Such a beautiful building. Oh, my goodness. So how did you two get involved into this project? Kiefer and Nick. Well, so once we started, you know, when it was greenlit, the project, um, 
it's uh, our task at Cut Media to find our crew for it. Um, so the first question always at our company cut is who are the most specialized people you know to work within that sport so we always start researching straight away to find the best people for the job which was these guys <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so we um we went uh, with dan mcgee uh one of our dp dops and um then these guys know know uh, dan so yeah it kind of just it was kind of word of mouth, I guess, which is the best way when it works yeah. out like that. And it's always amazing to be able to like work with a crew that have worked together already. Um, and it just makes us all feel a bit more of a family for the four nights. <laughs> yeah, well, that's ex that's super important. Yeah, yeah under, under, like under stressful kind of scenarios as well. It's, it's super helpful. Exactly. <laughs> When me and Nick actually got asked about the job, we were out skating together and Dan, <laughs> yeah. Dan called Nick whilst Nick was filming me. <laughs> oh, really? oh, <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I think I can get this DOP Kiefer to like help out as well. And he's like, oh, I'll just pass you the phone. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite, quite a funny, organic <laughs> way that yeah. it went down, I yeah. feel like, in that sense. So but that makes it easy when you're working together as well. Because yeah, we, we all know how each other's working styles. And, yeah. 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 So you were friends. I mean, you were friends. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. Friends. Yeah. I've worked with Nick a few times on a few things. So yeah. Yeah, it's nice to be able to support each other on such a huge project. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So what were your exact roles? My role was DOP, but I had more like eyes on lighting and stuff. Okay. Um, and I think the reason Dan wanted me to come on board was because I could add like a cinematic value uh, to the project. Um, whereas Nick and Dan are much more specialized in filming skateboarding. So I guess that goes over to you now, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I've got a long history in skateboard videography and filming, but also do branded content as well. It's like my main role, like in work. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, I don't know. They kind of need that approach. You need somebody who knows skateboarding inside and out to yeah. put the hand on the project and make sure it's guided the right way. So for someone like me who doesn't know a whole lot about skateboarding, I I figured that if you film skateboarding, you're not on a skateboard yourself, but you were combining the two, yeah. right? You're no, like that's on the skateboard and filming. For for a lot of it, that's literally how it's done. Yeah, it's just incredible. Uh, yeah, you can hang on a multitask, but you know, if you want to be able to move in that environment and kind of be reactive, then you have to be on a skateboard yourself or or something similar. Yeah. yeah, you can't just be running around because you'll end up with a shaky, yeah, shaky footage no otherwise. Yeah. No. Now that I thought about it, I was thinking, okay, it makes sense. But I think a lot of people listening in are not knowing this, and I didn't either, mm. yeah. because it sounds so impossible. I mean, I do film, <laughs> but I'm really happy I can stand on the ground while at it. <laughs> yeah. I think I would really not be able to do uh, it both at the same time. It's quite a hard floor as well, isn't it? The girls are oh. talking about it being super slippery. Yeah, yeah. Slippery. yeah it so, was. Yeah. Add cameras to it as well. Yeah, like, that mosaic tile is pretty unforgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my we goodness. didn't have any accidents. So, well, oh, good. the athletes might have. Yeah. <laughs> <Not us>. uh, <laughs> skateboard videography, is, to use one of Dan's words, it's like quite bandit, you know? You, uh -huh. you go out and you try and get what you can done but under no like official restraints or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, actually to see the f like to see the footage transmitted back to a monitor, like a director's yeah. monitor is actually pretty cool. Like, yeah. And yeah. like obviously really helpful for me yeah, so that I can actually review stuff as we're going because uh, we're moving so quickly from place to place and being really reactive to what the athletes want to do basically in the moment. Yeah. Uh, so we can't just be stopping to be like, wait everyone while we review the shots and exactly. we got what we need so that was really helpful yeah that's, yeah. Oh, perfect. that's cool <laughs> yeah sounds like a lovely production so <laughs> it also sounds very complex what kind of roles were there besides your roles how many people were there for instance was it a super big crew or yeah well, we had we had um like on one of the main nights where we were uh, filming the tricks going over the raptor and stuff. Uh, we had a, going over the raptor. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> casual, so no we biggie. Had, um, <laughs> we had a gaffer, Rob Gifford, very good friend of mine, also a skateboarder, um, and two sparks. So that added a lot on that night with a lot of lighting kit. We had we also DIT had, yeah. as well, yeah. um, sound as well. The array team. Yeah, so we we brought yeah. in uh, the flash pack, who were our team that did uh, the camera race. We had sixty cameras going off in the billet time it's unbelievable um, and that was a big part of the the exciting part of the brief was we were asked like how do we create this like you know shot that people are going to look at and go wow how did they film that or how exactly. did they do that so that was 
super exciting to like come up with that and then work with the flash pack who are like really technical in in the field of array cameras so um yeah that was really fun <laughs> had you worked in that way before like had you seen this yeah I've, I've seen them but i haven't personally directed that before so uh -huh. that was just like a totally new world as well i feel like we've all learned so much from this project yeah <laughs> it's a lot of like first time stuff happening but everyone just kind of just dive straight into it to the unknown of it and i think that's perfect though, it out. because it also keeps the yeah. creativity at a higher level yeah. because you're probably nervous i'm guessing yeah to do this some of these things for the first time and it's the or... same with the athletes as well they're constantly pushing themselves to to do the best that they can do on the shoot and i feel like we matched it as well with what we were doing we were all pushing ourselves so oh, the atmosphere must cool. have been crazy yeah like, it was nuts yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> but in a good way <laughs> so can you talk a bit about the athletes like yeah so we had um letitia buffoni um from brazil laura brugeman uh, from belgium and also odana bertrand from uh, Argentina. And then we had Margie uh, Didal, who is from the Philippines. Um, and she uh, is was recently injured, which was a shame, but mm. actually it was just amazing because she decided to come anyway and she gets on really well with Letitia. And um, you've worked with her before in a yeah. previous project and she's just a ball of energy. She's amazing. And so she was ended up being our hype girl <laughs> and just kind of, <laughs> she was there to, to facilitate and like keep everyone you know all the athletes like yeah. awake yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in the keep, middle of the yeah night. yeah definitely yeah. but um she ended up keeping us all awake as well <laughs> um perfect. and yeah she was she just brought so much to the filmmaking side as well because she wanted to just get involved and um, so that she wasn't just standing around doing nothing it's really um, great that you guys decided or i don't know who decided this that she even though she was injured was going to come over and that yeah. in the end she fulfilled such so, an important yeah, role being yeah. a part of our kind of pitch um to really give as much of you know of the filmmaking to the um, athletes as you can because you know Red Bull talked to us a lot about um, re we want to reach a wide audience with this a broad audience the skating is absolute paramount like that and it has to uh, reach the skate community first but yeah. also it has to like reach a wider audience and so um, w the way we wanted to do that and how we interpreted that was to make it feel really user generated where yeah. possible and like lots of mixed format and playful things like that and so getting her it just feels more authentic, I think, and real when you actually ask them to film themselves yeah. um, and give them cameras. So that was a big part of the fun of uh, being able to use all the different Canon cameras so that we could kind of get them involved. <laughs> and were they kind of used of shooting themselves like that? Is that a popular thing to do for skaters to constantly? Yeah, not, actually, yeah. Um, I don't think Margie had that much experience with the camera mm. prior. No, like, I she, but so. she, no doubt she has friends over in the Philippines that film her. And, you know, she, she understands like the, the process yeah but uh to actually give her the camera like you know the first thing i got back from her I have a look and then i was just like mm, i can use some work maybe but uh -huh. then i'd tell her like some some little fundamentals of like how you use a fisheye essentially like letting, letting the skateboarder go from one edge of the frame to the other edge of the frame and uh then yeah she took to it like like a duck to water it's amazing and yeah. like the footage we're getting back like oh this is awesome this is like, amazing so nice to have somebody else on the team you yeah know? exactly like because there, there, having... there, there were three of us. There was Dan, myself, and uh, Kiefer doing the filming. But then to add someone else to the mix who's actually getting like this really interesting footage is awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and when you're being tasked like shoot something really real and vloggy style, you know, it's it's it would be intimidating for anyone to to be filmed and to just be natural in front of the cameras True. because it's so staged in a way it could yes. feel staged yeah. so it's really handy to actually hand the cameras to them because then they can just muck about and have fun yeah, and then have... you just get some really like natural moments between them and what was like really amazing about having four four skaters there was like they all were different ages and it was really cool to see how like for instance Laura is one of the youngest skaters and she's um, an amazing street skater and same with Aldana um, but then also like uh, Letitia's um, uh, you know been around for a bit longer and is more experienced and just seeing how they all were kind of working together to kind of push each other and what they were doing and feeding back to each other kind of suggestions for for another go and so that was really cool to see the energy of you know the four of them working together to kind of just to do the best that they could must have sessions. been such a like same for you guys such a once in a lifetime opportunity yeah. for them as well to 
to do it in a location yeah like totally this. and seeing them when they first came through the doors yeah just seeing yeah. the museum for the first time was like and capturing it literally Their documentary faces, style yeah. was so sick oh um, that's amazing yeah. they must have been just it is that kiddie thing where you're like walking and you're just like Pfft. Like this yeah. is nuts. It's, yeah. it's the kind of project that only Red Bull could pull off. Hundred you know? yeah. percent. <laughs> How or who of you decided in this amazing setting where to film? Like where, where mm. to build the rigs and which areas to choose? So it always started with the athletes. So Letitia actually came on the first um, recce. Okay. With myself and Red Bull. And we basically walked around with Joe, uh, who is her like really close friend and he's an amazing uh, ramp builder. So um, we walked around the space and basically between Joe and Letitia, they decided what she wanted, you know, to skate. Um, and then we just came up with the plans to kind of make that happen, essentially. So it was really fun because we just went on a full recce around the museum and she was like, I want to do this, I want to do this. And then, yeah. So and by doing that. that, did she kind of then decide as well for the others, mainly, right? For the other skaters? Yeah. So it was, it was, yeah, there was definitely enough thought that it was like, okay, she can obviously push herself on it, but it would, it would suit all of their types of skating styles. So yeah, yeah definitely. And were there some impossible did she point out places where it was just impossible to build something around it or too dangerous or too I high mean or? the raptor was the one where it was like could this be a crazy thing to do <laughs> and everyone was like let's make it happen so yeah. yeah so like that was definitely the one that everyone's like oh not sure about that but we just made it happen which was really cool so if you're talking about the raptor like can you just for the people listening yeah what are we looking at like how does this look is it super high or yeah, so we're looking at this <laughs> raptor that's on a plinth uh, in the main hints hall. Um, and the main issue was how to, I guess, get up enough speed and also like height to be able to jump the raptor, which is what she wanted to do. And she wanted to land flat, which is also a lot of pressure on her body yeah. uh, on that kind of floor as well. So, um, so yeah, so then there was a lot of discussions around um, building a mega ramp. <laughs> in the amazing kind of uh, hall stairs that come down towards the flat part of the hall. Um, so and the ramp was... It, a ramp for that. On the stairs going Yes, yeah, so we had two stair. ramps. We had one that was going down the stairs. Uh, so she'd start at the top, skate down, build up enough speed. And then there was another ramp that was built to kind of... Go, go over the ramp. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That okay. Cool. <laughs> Did you do this same ramp? Uh... <laughs> I, I did, but okay. I didn't ollie it. No, I, I didn't. I didn't actually try and go over the raptor, but I was up there with the camera and I got the shot, kind of rolling down, just to kind of. I I'm not even sure if it's going to get used, to be honest. But I, yeah, I, we'll I kind of half of me just wanted to do it, and then the other half of me was like, oh, I could make a good cut in shot, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe not do it all. Like, all <laughs> <way>. <laughs> and how does it feel when you really like nail a shoot like this, like on the last day? When something goes perfectly, can you describe that feeling? It's, it's a bit like landing a trick in skating, I guess, yeah, actually. Yeah, it's the same. Ah. Really. Yeah. A lot of satisfaction. Well, there's, <laughs> like, when, you, when you're filming, right, there's, there's this, like, you know, there's obviously pressure on the athlete to do their trick, but there's also pressure on you to film it. And, you know, you've got to film it every single time, right, in the hope that they're going to do it right once. So, you know, the, there's there's... Because it's such a team effort as well, it, there's this like general feeling that everyone gets when something gets done. So like when these guys are really getting their tricks, you're like, yes, come yeah. on, like this is going to be yeah. good. It worked. Yeah. That big celebration moment's pretty epic as well. Yeah, and everyone absolutely. like runs in and you're like, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. Beautiful. <laughs> so can you explain how Canon assisted in this project? Yeah, it was just like, un again, an unbelievable scenario to, to have like Canon involved because it is like the toy box where you're like, yes. <laughs> Can, can I pick anything? And it's like, yeah, you can. Oh, um, what a dream. I know. So uh, we literally went with Canon through like the list of uh, kit that we could work with. And then these guys got to come over and kind of visit. And you could literally pick. You were like, yeah, this, this, yeah, this. literally. Oh. And yeah, so like, we asked for, didn't we? I know, I yeah. know. Wow. It was yeah, we just, amazing. We just got to look at the website and be like, yeah, that'll be good. Oh, no way. Yeah, pretty it much. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very exciting. And then, um, yeah, we obviously had to. I guess for me, at least, the first question was just like, what what out of the kit list would suit you know the the approach for the shoot and the visual style? Um, so we really wanted to get like a mixture of of Canon's kind of equipment uh, used. Mm -hmm. um, so once we had kind of decided what 
what we, what we wanted. <laughs> then these guys came and like tested, and then that was it. Yeah, and, and it was brilliant because they came on the shoot as well. So yeah, ah, we were they very were hands right on, there which was too. just brilliant. Yeah, and in this whole kind of Canon ecosystem for you two, what was it like? Because you had assistants like on the ground then during the shoot, they would come in and yeah, help out. Jack and Aaron from Canon um, were actually present on the shoots. So they like operating the uh, PTZ camera. But on the first night where we got in, it was, um, you know, lots going on and they were just basically just helping us set up the cameras to the configurations we wanted, you know, the right shooting in the right log and stuff like that. They were so helpful. They just really helped us like start the shoot off basically because I think between me, Nick and Dan, what, how many cameras were we setting up? Like six or seven yeah. maybe or something like uh, that? Yeah, That's well, crazy. we're straight at the boxes as well. Yeah. Like fresh, fresh at the boxes, uh -huh. like... I love that. Yeah. It's like the big reveal. I know. So <laughs> having, having to unpack, <laughs> unpack all these cameras like it's Christmas. <laughs> and then and then set them up for the first time. So yeah, there's a lot of work to be done there. So it's, like you know, if, it, if we didn't have them to help us out, we would have been, yeah, in trouble for sure. <laughs> what with is the time trouble? constraints. <laughs> what a dream, especially to have someone on site who kind of oh, tells absolutely. you which exact. Oh yeah, like the, both those guys super knowledgeable. So like anything we needed to know, like and the cameras, right? So like there's there's always something that's like buried deep in a menu somewhere that yeah <laughs> that you know, know. You, <laughs> that you want to know, but you don't know where it is because all camera for like all camera systems are different, and then yeah. they just know exactly how to get what you needed out of the camera. It's great. That's a dream. Yeah. Okay, that's my dream for my next shoot. Yeah. I'm gonna ask Canon very nicely. Can you go with me on the shoot? <laughs> <laughs> so, Kiefer or Nick, why did you pick which camera? So yeah, Canon gave us like a massive range of cameras, like all the cameras that we could ask for, which is amazing. And uh, like the for for myself and Kiefer, we were using a like the C300 Mark III for our like documentary run and gun style camera, like that had the 18 to 80 uh, servo zoom on it, which was awesome. Like really felt like skateboarding um then Kiefer had the c500 mark ii and that had the sumeray glass on it and that was the, the full frame beast well. <laughs> yeah yeah no, that was really helpful because i was getting quite a lot of the you know reactions and stuff of uh, the skaters of so yeah. like having some in full frame where it could be on a nice wide lens get really close and get them all in was that would super helpful mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh i i had the, the eos c70 and that was on a like rs3 pro gimbal and that was kind of like the run around the skaters try and get some of the the action but kind of felt more immersive as well like not just so static um so that was that was cool hope that something like gets used it is <laughs> i can confirm um, and you read that was on your skateboard as well yeah people doing who don't that on the skateboard that, yeah, yeah. I, I, actually the the c300 mark three as well like yeah, we had a yeah. fish eye on uh, one of those two so that That's was kind of getting in, in the thick of it as well. Um, and that was kind of like a, there's a good good weight for a camera. So like, you know, not too shaky or anything like that. <laughs> um, yeah, we had the e, uh, the XF605, which, which we gave to Margie and that had a, like a Sentry Optics fisheye adapter on it. So like that she get really into the action there. And I don't know, that, that was a real user generated like yeah. that, I don't know. I bet that stuff looks awesome. It looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. it like feels really, really in there. In there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We also had the PowerShot V10, um, which is really cool. This is like action camera, slightly bigger than action camera, but had like this little fold-out tripod. We tried mounting under the skateboard and I like, gave it to Margie, and she was running around with it, and it looked yeah. awesome. Like it was amazing. All it, there was a moment when we went, we went and checked in on some of the footage on DIT, and we thought it was just like a still from like the R5 or something like yeah. that. Yeah, wow. I'm really impressed with the image. Yeah, the color space it. was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's got like a one-inch sensor, so there's like a, a bit of depth of field on there. And it's just yeah, it look, looked really nice. And it's really a small camera, right? Yeah, it's small. Uh, yeah, brown. palm size. Palm size. Yeah, is that, that right. Yeah. It's perfect yeah. for vlogging, and that's what yeah. Margie used it for. And yeah, she just yeah. literally just be giving it to her all the time, and she'd be doing lots of because you can obviously do more of the selfie stuff as well so they were using it exactly. for that as well to kind of document their experience uh, but also really easy to use like for yeah. shooting actions it, it could also like dial in all the settings which you don't really yeah. usually get with an action cam well to mm -hmm. my knowledge anyway and i don't know to even be able to control the aperture is actually nuts for a little yeah. camera yeah. like that like you just don't get that usually Oh, cool. um, perfect adventure camera or sports camera exactly yeah. adventure yeah. camera would to be like a perfect thing, yeah. term for it yeah exactly yeah. and then we also had this very exciting gadget um the ptz uh 500 and 700 um which 
honestly made such a difference to our shoot because it was you know quite reactive and on the go so it meant that we could set up these cameras on stands mm -hmm. and get some high vantage points and um, because sometimes on the ground level there was so many of us <laughs> running around and it just meant that we could just get some really cool and um, kind of pan tilt zoom shots which really like fed into the side of the approach I was talking about earlier about having you know wishes and yeah crash zooms and, and it just really felt like it was a part of that the so this would basically the, the PTZ would basically film the whole area is that well, how it should so it was kind of like a little dj set <laughs> so we oh. had we had the canon guys like set up with it and we could basically figure out how like where we wanted to film and the, you know move the camera like it's a, i don't know how to describe it, actually it's got it, like a, a, a motorized a motorized head yeah so, it has a motorized uh, so you can point head. it any way you want and it's also got massive zoom range as well so yeah you can kind perfect of, for a location like that yeah you can follow the action you can kind of put it anywhere because well it, you know it's it's fairly small fairly compact like a lot more compact than any other camera system you put yeah. in its place so and so yeah. one of the most amazing shots um in the edit at the moment is the we have like this amazing mineral room so it's like full of gems and like <gasps> there's like honestly insane like insane rocks in there wow. but um it's a beautiful long room with loads of wooden cabinets full of objects that are just priceless and then um, when the girls came in and entered the room for the first time it's a really long corridor down the middle um which they came through and so we set up the ptz at the back um mm -hmm. of the room and so it was able to pick them up in cl in a close-up as they entered and then crash zoom all the oh, way out to the far cool. end of the hallway and it was a massive hallway so um so yeah it had an amazing range on it and distance. so you see all, you see them and their faces and their reaction yeah and then you see and then the whole coming right out uh, which was so cool just to introduce and it just really fed into the energy of like the style and everything for the shoot it sounds amazing yeah. i just can't wait to see this end result it's, <laughs> it's crazy so nick we've talked about the cameras uh, for a bit now but i'm very curious which lenses did you use on this project um so for the run and gun aspect yeah we we favored using like servo cine zoom lenses um for the c70 on the gimbal i used my my personal uh 24 to 105 just you know it's quite a lightweight lens to use on that that sort of setup which is good um what else we had a the canon fisheye which is actually like synonymous with skateboarding um you know that a lot of the times like skateboarders in the past use fisheye adapters but with them becoming in such short supply these days like people are finding alternatives and the best alternative on the market other than that is the 8 to 15 millimeter so that was that's really good it's like a lens that i use all the time like really familiar with using so yeah that was really fun to you know get involved with uh, we also use the Samira Cine lenses. Um, I was particularly using them uh, shooting wide open because the location was, uh, without lighting, was quite dark. Mm -hmm. So we're shooting wide open to get the nice character from those lenses that they're well known for. And uh, yeah, they're pretty lightweight and stuff. So I had quite a heavy camera build. So that was really helpful actually. <laughs> Yeah. To just like not have a massive zoom on it. <laughs> I can also imagine in a project like this that l lightweight gear is quite important. Yeah, well, uh, definitely very important because uh, my back was hurting a lot <laughs> 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 after the shoot. But um, I didn't want to opt for like an easy rig or anything because I've just felt like it might spoil some of the natural energy. And that's just, yeah, I guess that's not the way skateboarders normally film stuff. Do it, yeah. Yeah. So, Nick, with subjects like this that are moving incredibly fast i'm guessing you're using autofocus or how does this yeah yeah the, i don't think there'd be any other way to be honest like you you know you can try and do it by hand but you're never <laughs> going to keep up with the action um yeah like when when we were deciding what lenses to use you know it's really important that you know we could have a servo zoom but you know it also needed to have autofocus and luckily canon could actually provide that with the the T4.4, uh, 18 to 80, and the 7200 that they do. And um, yeah, just really great to have. Um, the Canon ecosystem is like quite renowned for like their really good autofocus. And yeah, even with the low light that we were facing, you know, we were shooting at like ISO 3200 in, in the building, you know, trying to do everything with 600 Ds or Xs, you know, just 
not not as much available light as you probably would like you know but then you've also got to you know expose the ambient of the room as well which wasn't particularly bright to begin with so you know you needed a good autofocus system that could keep up and yeah canon delivered it's really good and it tracks exactly like does it face track uh yeah so you got the option the, yeah yeah, yeah a few different functions isn't there yeah i think we had like face priority on there um I was and using the one shot function a lot. Found uh -huh. that quite yeah. helpful, especially when I did like fast zooms and stuff. Because whenever I got my hands on the zoom, I was up on the balcony, so it's so like zooming out quickly and just hitting the it's called the one shot function, I believe. Yeah, and that was just working really well for me. Yeah, yeah. Even with the C seventy, just like with the twenty four to one hundred five and the the what's it called the like the focal reducer like adapter mm -hmm. between the you know to make it full frame, and like that you know it's auto focusing great which you know you know zooming in and out whilst moving on a gimbal like you wouldn't really expect it you know like yeah. you'd expect it to have some some dropouts or some funny moments but yeah it was really good but it was spot on yeah that's exactly what you need in a yeah. situation like yeah. this you want it to work you know yeah exactly yeah. yeah so caitlin can you tell a little bit more about the bullet time capture yeah so we basically really wanted to create this special moment um in the story that people would watch the film and think, how did they capture that? Mm -hmm. um, so we looked at various different things that we wanted to do, but one that we really, really wanted to do was capture something special for uh, the girls jumping over or skating over the raptor. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a big part of the story is the the location and and how stunning it is the architecture is insane in the background and we wanted to do something in that main hall with the raptor and um, so we talked a lot about how you know when you see some of the most amazing kind of um photo bursts that you see in skate magazines are captured in photography mm -hmm. and how we could almost bring that to life uh, for the video um, so we looked at how we could incorporate that and uh, we found that the best way to do that would to be to create a kind of um, bullet time capture um, around the arcs almost around the raptor and captures the athletes in motion from almost like just as they're about to kind of lift off, yeah, lift off from, um, from the ramp and then over uh, the raptor and then land. Uh, so it was really cool because a big part of the storyline and the theme for the film was evolution mm -hmm. being where we were in the natural history museum um and so we wanted to look at like almost the evolution of time as as they're you know skating yeah, over moves. the raptor yeah and so it was a really easy way to do well not easy it was a really <laughs> cool way to capture that uh, and just also appreciate their form and and how that evolves like as they're as they're jumping the raptor um so that ended up being 60 cameras <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> so yeah it was pretty pretty epic to actually pull off something like that in in one night as well um and the athletes loved it they, so it, I, it was so cool i think i should know the answer to this but to be honest i, I don't so with a system like this do all the cameras the one goes off and then the next and then the next or exactly. they all continuously shoot they start at the same time and they shoot continuously. Yeah, so they they, they kind of just it's, it's a bullet time, so it just goes off and then it's like. Tch, tch, tch. I think they yeah, had. But do a, they go tch, 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 I think or? they had a few different flavors for it. So they had a, like a burst mode on it. They had each camera firing off sequentially, and also uh, did one where they'd all fire at the same time. I yeah. think. Um, yeah, there was like a load of v various ways they could approach it, um, and Gav who works on my team he's um was post-production supervisor and he's also um our editor for the project and so he had like a really amazing relationship with flashback and they were just going back and forth with ideas so they really wanted to capture it in a in a few ways mm -hmm. and also with flash and no flash just to kind of have lots of options in the edit and just yeah. to show it off in different ways um so that was really cool and is, is working really nicely in the edit as, as to kind of freeze them as they go as well right when you yeah. using flesh i can because there's like so many ways you can do it like one option ah oh, it's awesome they have like <laughs> ones that are a lot a lot more of like a trail so it's like quite ethereal ghostly yeah, yeah. yeah. slow shutter so you see yeah. like the slow shutter and it goes off and you just see that it's it's very painterly almost it's beautiful and um. um, and then there was more that was like with the flash, which is much more, you you capture that one moment frozen in time and you can really just see them properly yeah, like, in shot. shot. And, and then so that you can also almost move around them 
almost in like a three three D three D sixty kind of space. So you, we arc round in a frozen moment that they're in this in the air. So like that's really cool too. They'd also developed their own software. Yeah. So like you could see what had come out in real time. I, I imagine like usually you'd have to stitch all these things together and like it would take a while. Yes. Yeah. You know, a lot of post production, but like the what they had, you could actually just go around the corner, look behind the screen and just be like, wow, that's insane. Yeah, like, see it and they showed the develop. skaters as well and that's what got the skaters really hyped on it yeah. too so like yeah i don't know that's that's half of it right like is being able to feed back to the the talent and like make them feel like they're a part of the process and like, totally they were, they were really helping with that and then yeah. it's like almost like encourages them to like push themselves further and they're like okay now that we've done this trick like let's go for this one and exactly because so when you see the relationship yeah when you see the result right away you want to make it even better yeah. i mean if you are the skater you're like okay this looked really cool but if i move a little bit this way or that way it would be even cooler yeah. so it's amazing that they could see it on the spot i think yeah. so yeah notoriously skateboarders are very picky uh -huh. about how they've done their trick and stuff so you know as a filmer nick will know this a lot like you'll be filming a trick you might get multiple lands but until they've got one they're happy with they're not necessarily going to be like okay that's it yeah. so being able yeah to review on the job and stuff like yeah. that would have been really important and they were really stoked on the night as well yeah 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 Shout, shout out to Raf as well. The Sorry. Shout out to Raf. Uh -huh. uh, he was the uh, the guy who's like firing the triggers off. He's like very good skate photographer, but he was also there to make sure that the uh, the photos were getting timed at the right time. You know, like yeah. they had the right moment, which is awesome. Because he knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, the, the, yeah. How photographers do it, I have no idea with skateboarding. Like the timing of it, like not just to be in the right place and have the flashes and everything set. Up, you know, to actually find the right time to capture the moment yeah it's yeah. nerve-wracking it exactly. adds definitely a lot of pressure which is like good because it's a documentary so we want to like capture the pressure exactly. so. you're like, oh you're very nervous great we yeah. need that for our show. Yeah. everything was perfect for 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 the kind of tension yeah of <laughs> like, course not yeah. just that just the fact that we were shooting from the middle of the night that was all the valuable items like yeah. it's just made for a very suspenseful can you talk shoot. a bit about that about shooting at night for yeah. four nights in a row i, I feels like you would have a jet lag i didn't even think about it when it first came through that we i mean we were we were just excited we were like oh cool and then we're, then we realized that oh man this is actually so we had like a whole process we, of yeah uh, well so we started shooting on what the monday night but yeah monday night but i think we all had a go at changing our body clocks on the saturday night I right tried. or around then <laughs> like, like you would set your alarm at least, and then at least yeah. pushing a few hours back you know to kind of throw you into the rhythm so like yeah. oh, you go go to bed later and later every night until you hit that mark where you're sleeping from what say like nine or ten a.m. until yeah. four in the afternoon. And I'd speak to people on, <laughs> on set on the first night and be like, "Did you manage? Did you manage to change yeah. your body clock round?" And everyone's like, "No, I didn't manage. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no, I tried, but no." <laughs> yeah, so I think we all like ended up getting up around nine or ten a.m. on the Monday. Yeah, staying up all day, starting the shoot, oh. filming all night. But then I felt like I just switched quite quickly because I was just so tired that yeah. first time. There's so much excitement on the project as well. So yeah. like, even though we were shooting at night and obviously it did feel a bit weird being in this beautiful location at these hours that no one's allowed in it, but I sort of just felt like the excitement of the project carried us to the like rap time each night, basically. I mean, yeah. that's how I felt yeah. personally. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. you guys. No, absolutely. I've, the adrenaline I've... kept you going. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I've done lots of night shifts in the post-production world at the start of my career. So I'm kind of know the deal. Yeah. yeah. But um, like. yeah, shooting actually almost thinks a bit easier because, yeah, like I said, you get the adrenaline from shooting and stuff. You're not just sat behind a computer. So you lose track of time as well. In there. I don't know. If, did you notice mm. that? Like, because it's there's yeah. no I mean, there is obviously light, but it's you're so focused on what you're doing. You don't realize what time of yeah, day it is. And no. A lot of us are very used to shooting outside. So in like some ways it was really nice to be in like an enclosed space. Yeah. And like not have rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we lunch at like 2 a.m. as well. Yeah, lunch yeah. at 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just <laughs> 12 hours late. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually did have breakfast at the start and then lunch like, you know, yeah. towards the end-ish. But yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Great catering as well. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Very important. Put that in the podcast. Yeah. Well done, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Very important when you're working late at night. Oh, so massively. During the day, the Natural History Museum is open to the public. Yeah. So, at the end of your shoot, you had to break all the equipment, like everything you had set up, including the bullet rig, the whole everything had to go. Yeah. 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 Can you yeah. explain about? 
Well, I guess we we had a uh, a kit room for all our stuff that was uh, DIT where they were set up and stuff that we had to pack into each night. The ramp builders had to reset every night. So that was a really big job for them having to set up the dyno jump just so there's continuity across all the shoots, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot going on before the skaters arrived and after they left, basically. How many hours did it take to kind of get everything back from zero to have it totally build up again? We, I didn't, guess, we didn't really stick around to watch them derig, did we? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I was yeah. going to bed, mate. <laughs> <laughs> our bit. <laughs> it was like it was it was usually like around they had around three hours including like from start from the start of the night <laughs> is that right <laughs> and then especially the first night to get everything ready um, yeah the and then the, intense, the camera array yeah. night was night three um so that took a lot longer so we started mm. a bit later like the filming crew yeah uh, that night um but yeah it like bizarrely went quite smooth <laughs> all yeah. of it like it was it's, all right. Well, everyone yeah. knew what they had to do. Yeah. And everyone got on with it. We yeah. had a big brief really at the good. start and we just all kind of made sure everyone knew what was going on. And yeah, what their on. roles were. Yeah, because so there's so many of us. We just needed to be like really dialed in on what everyone was doing when. It's really a funny idea that the general public during the day would have never known what happened a couple of hours before they no. arrived at the museum as a visitor. There was like one night that we arrived a bit early and so we thought, oh, it's just, the museum's still open, so we'll head up and grab a coffee or something from the cafe. And it was yeah. just chaos. It was like kids screaming, running around. And I was like, oh my God, this is so different. And then just 10 minutes goes, they're all out. And then it's like, just quiet. Yeah, <laughs> whole different yeah. scenario or different feeling. I'm, I mean, an empty museum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, oh, when the lights change as well. <laughs> leaving the, well, watching everyone else having to leave who was a visitor and then I was just walking in like, yeah, I'm about to start work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> yeah. But like when we did the recce as well, right? We did the first two in the daytime. Yeah, the, yeah. The first one was definitely like oh, was the it day the second? The oh. second one we got to see it at night. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. with like the normal visitors right there, like yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. the, the building completely changes at night. Like, yeah. yeah, it looks, it looks so completely different. different. And this is quite yeah. a rare project as well because I think most of the time, or at least a lot of my friends have been there for kind of corporate events, and it's used as kind of for weddings and like parties, basically. So this was like a totally different vibe. Yeah, <laughs> not for skateboarders. No. Yeah. <laughs> so out of all the things in during the shoot, before the shoot maybe in the edit what what was the biggest challenge you had i was wearing like a quite a big rig at like many points during the thing like a gimbal rig had it on a pole at one point oh. and i'm there in the mineral room just like you know really watch turning around try not to you know these cabinets are like oh. you, like you said li- literally priceless like yeah. you know no amount of money could fix if you damaged any of the stuff yeah, yeah, in there yeah. so and yeah the, trying the more not you try to trying mind- not to fall off the skateboard whilst yeah holding these things yeah. yeah but the more you do that <laughs> usually uh, yeah the more difficult it becomes right yeah oh well yeah i guess it's heavy after a while which doesn't help but yeah. then i'm I'm rolling on the skateboard the floor is definitely not designed for skateboarding like the floor <laughs> for example like the floor in the hints hall was like these little mosaic tiles and, and i don't know if they gather dust or you know it's just naturally slippery but you know, it's quite hard to even like turn a circle without slipping out, which is crazy. And then in the other room is quite a grippy, what would you describe it as? I don't like know. It's a it. strange grippy floor anyway. So like to roll on that with a skateboard slows you down almost. So everything has to be in the back of your mind when you're actually riding a skateboard in that place. Yeah. It's kind of like the opposite of street skating, wasn't it? Normally in street skating, you've got very unideal terrain because uh-huh. it's so rough. Well, at least if you're in the UK anyway, and then being in there, like, no, it's actually kind of too good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slipping everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Extremes. Yeah, but I know the, the girls are definitely finding that quite hard. Yeah, so. it's just ad- ad- adapting to it, I suppose, isn't it? It took a wee bit of time, but they're absolute pros, so it's no problem. So they were good. Yeah. They yeah. Were... And then all the crew were just like ready to like dive in and protect anything yeah. <laughs> if there was a skateboard. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't get any far, any, any close that. to anything, but my God. I know. That was a challenge in itself, actually. Like, because yeah. you, you don't want to have too many bodies in the frame when you're filming. Like, you know, so you want people to stay out, but not also lose any priceless artifacts either. So. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bit of a, a balance there for sure. Like where to put all the skaters, you mean? Uh, well, no, even the, even the crew itself, I guess, because okay. like, you know, it, it, 
when it comes to the edit, it might not look like many people were there, but you know, it, it did take a good team to get this done. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so you have to kind of like work the cameras around the people in the room and vice versa. So. Which is why, like, behind the yeah, that's why <laughs> the, I think that's why the PTZ particularly, uh, and the action camera, the uh, and the uh, power shot V10 were so good because it meant that you could get the intimacy for the action camera stuff uh, through Margie and you know the athletes but then the ptz was great because you could kind of zoom in on moments and yeah, that's perfect. you didn't have anyone the, else exactly in the way <laughs> the rest of the frame was yes yeah, so you got empty. that kind of intimacy but also yeah the wider shots as well so it's cool so nick what is it like to use different cameras from the canon ecosystem um is actually awesome like you know the canon's like really reputable for its color science and like the first camera i ever got was 5d mark ii and you know you're blown away by the colors on that and you know, and not a lot of things have matched it since. Or I guess there are, you know, cinema cameras exist, but you know, the Canon color science is amazing. And uh, yeah, so across all the cameras that we used, pretty much they all had uh, C Log three, mm -hmm. which was awesome. Like, um, so when it comes to the edit, you know, presumably just <laughs> <laughs> slap a lot on there, do some color grading and you know, all the, all the cameras should match ideally, which is amazing. And um, also another thing with these as well, the menu systems, when you go into them, they all look the same. They've all got yeah. the same numbering, you know, the same little yes. icons at the top. So then, you know, you, you figure something out in this camera that the other one needs, then you can just mm. go in. Get I love it. that too. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. It's very intuitive because you know yeah. one camera, you know the next one too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And which, I think which without that, like without that kind of ease of process, we wouldn't have been able to have shot with that many cameras. No, yeah. it would have been so, such a struggle. Yeah. Can, yeah. So it was the only way we could have done it. So, I can yeah. honestly speak for other camera systems between every different camera that you get. They're all different. So yeah. to actually have that with this with with Canon is amazing. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it just beautiful. yeah, it made the job so much easier. Yeah, it's making yeah. our yeah. life a lot easier in the edit right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Oh, well, that's great. Cool. Yeah. So, out of everything, it's the most impossible question, but okay, let's go anyways. Your favorite thing from this shoot? I could answer outside of skateboarding because obviously, as a skater, that's probably incredibly obvious by now that being in that spot. I mean, having started skating when I was like thirteen and being able to do something with work. I mean, Nick does it a lot more in the skateboarding world than me. But so obviously that was a really big part of it, like just doing something that sh should really be impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, we've got a chance to do that. So that was one of the biggest things for me, I think. Yeah, that's definitely some bucket list stuff there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and we got to got do a, a portrait with uh, Letitia in front of like the world's biggest topaz gem as well. Oh I think that goodness. was quite, quite a big moment for me. Yeah. So just... For me to have it like so i can see it in my mind how big is this biggest topaz oh it's like yeah it's like that big oh, isn't it, it? Yeah, literally yeah. like glistens it's wow. so beautiful i think it's like oh, i do know i think it's like fourteen thousand carats or something oh. it's just Whoa. nuts like it's stunning <laughs> yeah we used a uh, like a split diopter so we could get the gem in focus and then through the cabinet get letitia in focus in the background in the mineral hall beautiful sounds amazing and yeah. for you what was your favorite Oh, there's so many. I mean, obviously the access to that kind of location yeah. is yeah. amazing. But I think for me, like in general, like the best part about my job is like working with athletes. And I think a big fear was, you know, that could happen in a space like that is that it's almost so big and so special and so exciting that you're just like, oh, is it all going to just feel like authentic enough? And so when we got mm. in there and just the girls... Like it was really nice to see them just having fun because that yes. was what the project was all about. Yeah. And sometimes you can't force that. It's just when you're you all right. get in the room and you see how how everyone gels. But yeah, like it was just amazing, like to see them all just have so much fun and such a good connection from the start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was really cool. <laughs> Beautiful. It was really dope yeah. as well that the the girls were doing it. Do you know what I mean? This yeah. wasn't just this opportunity wasn't just given to the guys. Yeah. That skate. Do you know what I mean? So that was that was pretty yeah, cool to really see cool a too. full team of girls going through it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, you, I totally agree like the the experience right like yeah. just just for the fact that it, it it really worked like you know we got in there and you, you could like we'd never worked with the girls before you know we're a completely different like team from them you know they're, they're with Red Bull and we're with Cat you know so it could have gone either way and we kind of made like a concerted effort to 
be like personal with the girls kind of like show that we skate and you know we kind of we know what, we know what they're, we're there to do we know what we're doing and we're just there to have a good time with them and yeah it really worked out like that yeah so it's quite hard to be specific because you know there's so many little things that happened that just made the thing so awesome but like as a whole it was amazing yeah it's so yeah. awesome when you have a brief on paper And then in the end, everything works out or yeah. it becomes like what you were hoping. I looked back at it the other day and I looked at my treatment and I was like, oh my gosh, we made that. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. It's we so cool. It. We, we put so much work into it, like we in did. the pre-production as well, lot, yeah. that like it, there was no way it was going to go bad. Yeah. Like, it had to go well. And I think everyone yeah. just had the most amazing attitude because you just never know, like you say, until you get in the room. But yeah. I feel like everyone just brought such good energy to it that it made it perfect. <laughs> oh, nice. So what's next? Very difficult question always. Well, for me, I mean, I don't know what can beat this now, <laughs> personally. <laughs> That's... It's just like, yeah, one of those ones that just doesn't come around very often. So I hope it's to work with Red Bull again and Canon. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. <Yeah. laughs> no, I, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> what I said. <laughs> no, I did, I did a job with Red Bull last year. It was awesome. Like, got to work with like a really good team of people. And a lot of them, well, they're all on this, this this job as well, which is awesome. So like, hopefully that'll be continued. I've got like a personal project of mine, which is like filming at night. So, you know, you'd go to say like a city in Asia and you'd uh, just basically sleep during the day and skate during the night. So this is something oh. that I've already got like four versions of at the moment. And like, I'd want to continue to do that. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah. You're Mikhail, an expert Mikhail's now in season. that. Yeah, the basically. Night. Yeah. So it wasn't <laughs> time this, this whole experience was, wasn't really anything new to me, but yeah, it was, it, it, well, apart from, you know, the location, yeah. being able to do it in my the own Raptor, city and yeah. get to go home every night as well, which is quite yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> synonymous with just skateboarding in general, isn't it? And the projects like, you know, we had to wait until it was night and sometimes, you know, skateboarders especially with street skating you wait until night because maybe there's less pedestrians or exactly. security guard might be having a kip or something like that <laughs> yeah. so you know it's quite quite often we, 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 we will go out at night to skate things that we're not normally able to skate so yeah it definitely has a bit of relation to, to the to, real to yeah. what we've done yeah you know? anything you're going to be doing Kiefer? i'm just uh yeah i guess after that i just Yeah, I want to have more involvement in doing more projects to do with skateboarding, really, because it's my biggest passion. And uh, yeah, be, getting the opportunity to be involved with this at like, quite a high level of responsibility was really special, actually. It's, it's a lot of hard years of graft in both skating and filming. Yeah. You know, it's like it's sort of like it's like it come together. Yeah. It's beautiful when that happens and when you realize that you can actually do something extremely new and difficult and and that yeah, it just absolutely. works out like this yeah dream. It's, it's nice when it comes full circle as well because you know you you start with the skateboarding right and then you might do other things you know because you want to supplement income while you skate as well <laughs> but then you can do jobs where you actually get paid to, to skate you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> to skate <laughs> really and then it's amazing you know that you've lived in the dream then absolutely. Oh. well thank you all three of you so much for sharing all of this I'm really jealous I wasn't there on the shoot. So it just sounds like a dream. But thanks for sharing all that you just did. Thanks. And uh, yeah, good luck with all that's coming up. Thanks so much. Amazing. Thank you for having, you for having us. I really yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good to talk. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for joining us for this very special bonus episode of Shutter Stories. There are lots of other amazing conversations to listen to. So head over to the Canon Europe YouTube channel. The episodes are also available on all major podcast platforms. So make sure to tune in. See you soon. Shutter Stories, a Canon podcast. <laughs>